Howdy. Welcome to Osgrave Royalty. I am Justin. Oh boy, here we go. So, you saw the title of the video? This is going to be the first video in my first series. <laughs> A lot of firsts going on here. First uh, series on YouTube I'm attempting. Um, first video in the Archetype series as a whole, which begins with this book, though there will be other archetypal psychology books. Uh, but this book we'll first be covering is very dear to me. Uh, it's called Archetypes by Dr. Anthony Stevens, A Natural History of the Self. So in this video, it's going to be a little housekeeping, what you can expect from the series. Uh, a little bit of tiny bit about the author, uh, about the book, and we'll be going over kind of the layout of the series that I have planned. So let's get started. All right. If you don't know who I am, uh, I'll link a video in the description. It's kind of an about me channel introduction. Um, short version is I'm just a fan of ideas. I like to send up the flare. Um, when I see something that I would think is valuable for people or that I'd want to selfishly start a dialogue with about some subject, send that flare up and call people over and say, hey, you might want to check this out. That's what this series is, basically. That's what this channel is. Um, and it's not just going to be about archetypal psychology. Uh, maybe we'll talk about Thomas Sowell or Plutarch's Lives or some strict philosophy like Kierkegaard. And, and any, any others. Um, I rule this channel with an iron fist and it'll be whatever I want. Uh, I, I'm optimistic, but yeah, that's basically what this channel is about. Um, I have a degree in philosophy. I don't say that for any kind of credential bragging or authority or anything. As a matter of fact, I think if a degree is more working against you these days in 2022 than... Uh, been working for you, but that's another rant. In any case, um, I just say that to give some context as to what I'm interested in, what I'm familiar with. I guess the one benefit of a degree in philosophy is the just sheer exposure to the amount, to the sheer amount of ideas out there and being able to, you know, uh, interact with them. And uh, archetypes, I guess, archetypal psychology is one victim of that, I suppose. <clears throat> so, why archetypal psychology? Why start here? I mean, there's Freudian, behavioral, etc., etc. So, TLDR, I find this very fascinating. That's that's really it. It's because I'm I'm into it. I dig it. Um. I have some notes in front of me, by the way. Full disclosure. Hashtag overshare. I uh, I like putting things together that aren't intuitively meant to maybe be put together. Um, that was a bad way of phrasing it, but basically I like interdisciplinary topics, and philosophy is probably the most interdisciplinary but archetypal psychology is big as well. Uh, it has aspects from uh, mythology, anthropology, biology, psychology, and even alchemy. And alchemy is a growing interest of mine right now. Not the uh, men with beards and the in the cellars with the Bunsen burners and all that. Uh, a different kind, which we'll talk about in the future. <laughs> I'm, frankly, I'm really excited to talk about that. Uh, I'm. I, I have several series planned after this, so this is just the beginning. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a perfect match. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm interested in the human condition, and I hope that y'all would be too. So if you if y'all are, I assume I am optimistic that this will be of value to you. And again, like with the sending up of the flare. I'm not concerned about agreement or disagreement or proving or disproving. 
take what is useful and discard the rest. Again, I just send up the flare. Um, I think to, to things that I think would be that you might want to be aware of what you do with it. I don't really care. None of my business, but I do, you know, I would like, I would like to encourage at least the encounter with the ideas to see what comes of that uh, intellectually. And if it helps you, all the better. That'd be the ideal. So, and speaking of helping, um, the projection here is not lost on me. They, they say that people in the helping professions like therapists and doctors, maybe less so doctors, but especially therapists, clergy perhaps, although I can't speak to that, um, that there's projection in that healers really want to be healed. And I'm guilty of that, uh, I'd say. I am doing my own self-exploration and journey, so this is just something I encountered and felt inspired to share it. So that's sort of where I'm coming from. And speaking of that, you know, self-help as an industry has exploded recently. Um, and I'm a big fan of Alan Watts. And he said that, and he brought up this question that, like, is self-help really possible? Because the self that needs help is the same self that would be doing the helping, you know? So how how equipped, how productive could that actually be? And I, I struggled with this myself. Um, I have a friend who reminds me that uh, I get in my own way a lot intellectually. He said, like, I'd be a lot happier if I were dumber. And that might be true, but um, <laughs> there was that, you know, my, another friend makes fun of me because I'm like, well, d to play devil's advocate, and he fucking hates that. Um, but it reminds me of that. Um, quote, I think it was Lyndon Johnson. He said, can someone bring me a one, one handed economist? So they can't say on the other hand, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of some, I guess, intellectual tomfoolery, some analysis paralysis stuff. Um, I've gotten a lot better, I, I would say, but yeah, I, I, I always thought like, you know, trying to do like self help by yourself. Like, wouldn't you be biased? <laughs> I mean, that's another way of restating Alan Watts's kind of challenge, but um, how do you know that if you arrive at a conclusion, you're not hiding from yourself? You know, that, that was always the, the, the thought nagging at me, preventing probably, um, increased <laughs> mental health so to speak. But yeah, um, I found archetypal psychology to be a useful tool to be not wholly unbiased. I don't know if that's possible, but at least in a, a step in the right direction. And we'll talk a lot more about how that will work when we get into the um, later books in the series. There is some of that in this book, though. I'm not going to just leave that as a teaser. That would be uh, very uncool. So yeah, there'll they'll definitely be um, some tools you can use in here um, that are practical. So, But I will say the, imp the importance of this work is the theoretical foundations. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So about the author, um, yeah, Dr. Anthony Stevens has degrees in medicine and psychology from Oxford University and a diploma in psychological medicine from the Royal College of Physicians. He's And he's a lecturer at the Jungian Institutes in San Francisco and Los Angeles, as well as in London and Zurich. And there's a video in the description I'll link. It's a, kind of a nice documentary, um, pseudo documentary about a glimpse in, into his life, I guess, and, and work. Um, So about the book, like why why this book in particular? There are a lot of books on archetypal psychology. Why Archetypes and Natural History of the Self by Dr. Anthony Stevens? Uh, well, 
my introduction to archetypal psychology was through Robert L. Moore's book, King Warrior, Magician, Lover, which will be the next series I have planned right after this. To talk about application. Um, there's some great application coming. Uh, but I, I read this book after that book. And um, my judgment tells me that if I wanted to present the material to somebody, this book should come first in that it kind of lays down the theoretical foundation for what's to come. And what's to come is the application. Again, I already mentioned this, but uh, King, Warrior, and Magician, Lover are archetypes articulated by Robert L. Moore. But that sentence doesn't make much sense if you don't really know what an archetype is or like its biological roots or anything like that. It just sounds like a new age word that, that really means nothing. So uh, uh, here, you know, a, a sort of covert agenda here is that I think young and archetypal psychology in particular is kind of clumped in with like crystals or tarot or stuff like that. It's like kind of out there. And I get that, but um, this this book is one major step to bringing a lot of scientific and biological roots that archetypes are not just in the conceptual, ethereal realm. They're actually practical and biological in nature, which we'll get to. So that, that really appealed to me. Um, not that I have anything against the New Age stuff. I do think, though, it's a disservice to both sides of the scholarship to uh, lump this under that umbrella. Although the marketing, you know, isn't great. <laughs> um, like, arch again, people, are, no one uses the word archetype on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe except for Jordan Peterson. So, yeah, it's... I don't, I don't blame anybody for the mis, potential miscategorization. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, nothing is built without a foundation. This book serves as the best foundation for archetypes, and I say that with some confidence because Robert L. Moore himself recommended people use this as a foundation, and he he's kind of a luminary, and... Um, I've been, I've heard of others recommending Dr. Stevens as well, so I think this is a pretty reliable, reliable source. Um, and just another thing about the book that sort of indirectly inspired me to do something like this series is the immense talent of the writing. Oh my God. Lord, can this man write? <laughs> I have that in my notes. I love this guy. Like, I'm intellectually in love with this man. And he here's why. So, coming from philosophy, and I've, I've mentioned this before, oh, oh, although in a different video that I haven't released yet, um, that clarity in writing is integrity in thought. Hyphen, Justin, yeah. <laughs> um, in philosophy, and I'm thinking of Immanuel Kant, Critique of Pure Reason, that book is hell on earth to read. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I was reading Schopenhauer at 15, and with some amount of confidence, um, but... Even I have my limits. And when you have thinkers, you know, you, you think that like people in academia or anywhere really, they claim that they have had some sort of breakthrough or discovery. And how do they choose to communicate it? <laughs> in the most incomprehensible writing imaginable. That's why I say, like, and this is something Molyneux, Stefan Molyneux talked about. Um, he, he mentioned, like, 
Yeah, just talking about Ayn Rand. That. Yeah, if you want if you want people to hear your message, make the writing really damn clear. Okay, <laughs> and yeah, Doctor Stevens checks that mark. You know, check checks that checkbox, uh, for sure. So, it was just it's it's so refreshing after all that I've read on complex subjects to finally read something on a very complicated inter interdisciplinary subject that's written very clearly and profoundly. It's like, it's just good prose and there can be good prose. There's some like passages in here. I'm like just really moved by the language. Uh, sorry to rant about this, but it's just so rare. I, I have to rant about it. Um, Comment down below if you can identify with that. So, let's talk about how I'll organize the series. So there'll be 10 parts after this, and the last part, including the last part, which will be the kind of conclusion, me summarizing my thoughts on what we've talked about. And there's a, a lot going on. Um, Again, I can't cover every single thing in this book. I'd love to, but that's kind of out of the scope of this series. I'll, I'll get to those details in a moment. But I'll have the schedule posted in the description, and it's tentative. But 90% probability that it won't change. But I'll, I'll list them here. So first we'll have archetypes and attachment which explores, it's kind of like the, the superhero origin story of Dr. Anthony Stevens and how he himself got to archetypal psychology via his beginnings um, immersed in attachment theory in the, in the John Bowlby vein, which we'll be, he'll, we'll be talking about him. Very important figure. And, just a very quick side random note tangent. Um, I'd recommend the personal development school if you want to know about attachment theory, about like anxious attachment, dismissive avoidant, fearful avoidant, and secure attachment styles. I'll have a link to her, um, that channel below. It's run by Thais Gibson. Incredible channel. I've gotten a lot of value from it, so just plugging it here. Um, it, that's She covers attachment theory, and attachment theory is very closely related to archetypal theory. So, at least in the theoretical sense. And then uh, comes archetypes and evolution. And in this section, we'll be talking about the biological roots of archetypes and how, they, how the archetypes themselves are just as much a product of evolution as our, as our genes. Um, We'll talk about the archetype of the mother that comes next, part three. Part four is the, the father and the role of the family. And then we'll talk about the masculine and the feminine. For those in the know, that'll be a lot about the anima and the animus. The male... archetypal inclination in the female and the female archetypal inclination in the male. So, ne yeah, next is on transformation and the archetype of initiation. Hmm. I, I love all my, my sections here. I love all my babies, but that one I'm looking forward to the most. Um, and you'll see when we get there, but yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. If you watch one video, watch that one, I would say. Having not filmed it yet, but... Uh, next comes archetypes, ethics, and society. How archetypal psychology and the ramifications of these theories manifest in the wider world and how we treat each other. The shadow comes next. And then the transcendent function. We'll talk about that. And um, in that section, we'll talk about 
the function of dreams and the archetypal power that symbols have and images. So, yeah, that's about it. And then uh, the last part will be putting it all together with my concluding remarks. So, yeah, in terms of delivery, I hope that sounds interesting to you, by the way. Uh, um, I'm excited. Um, but anyway, in terms of delivery, I'll be... Again, it's not like I'm not going to cover every point. Again, that's really out of scope for what I'm doing. I'm just taking some key points in the book, trying to tie them together and doing like, uh, and just sharing my thoughts. You know, I want to keep it conversational. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll be quoting from the book here and there and, um, you know, and just sharing, just having a chat basically about it. Uh, they'll be about 30 minutes in length each. And uh, that's all I can get my camera to record in one go after all. Hashtag YouTube noob. So yeah, um, that's a lot of the administrative work. Uh, yeah, I. <laughs> one of my friends called what I'm doing here a glorified book report. And at first, you know, I was perturbed by it, but I've since adopted it. <laughs> I don't think it's, you know, it's it's good shorthand for what my goal is here. Not a summary, because that just sticks to the book's material. So that's not what I'm doing. I'm taking parts of it, and it's sort of like a glorified reaction video. It's like a <laughs> average white guy Reacts to Archetypes by Dr. Anthony Stevens. Explode emoji. Good goes on World Star. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. Just to reiterate, I'm just an average dude. I'm a fan of these ideas. I'm no intellectual authority. The assumption is I'm just making introductions. Please, don't take my word for anything. Do not take my word for anything. <laughs> If if you like the topics, go research them yourself. And yeah, don't take my word for anything. I've said that before. I mean, um, yeah. And I, I'm I'm learning this with y'all. Again, I, I'm I'm no expert. And I and yeah, I'm 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 on this journey of learning about archetypal psychology, and. What better way to learn it even further than to do a YouTube video series on it, you know? So that's sort of where I'm coming from. Um, and yeah, instead of uh, annoying all my friends about this stuff, I thought I'd, you know, annoy the world about it. All joking aside, though, or, you know, I hope you all get something out of it and that we can start a dialogue about it. And, uh, this is an early channel, so I should be able to respond to a lot of comments. And I'm thinking of some more resources to do with this series. Again, I'm new, I'm new to YouTube in general, so I don't know what I don't know. And I call I'm calling this this particular book and the related videos uh, my first season. So this is largely a kind of a guinea pig season uh who knows what i'll learn from putting it all together and how i can do it better next time and hopefully y'all will be a part of it of helping me help myself helping y'all yeah all right Whew. so with all that being said we can get started the next video will be the strict part one entering the book Archetypes by Dr. Anthony Stevens. So I'll see you all there. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.